Okay, here we go. All right, uh, this story I'm going to tell uh, comes from the Ukraine by way of Eric Kimmel, whose books I really enjoy. Uh, they say that long, long ago, and of course we're going on the theme of school here, long ago there was once a man known as the Dubner Magid, and all that really means is, uh, Dubner means from Dubno, which is a town in Ukraine, and uh, the Magid is a teacher, hence the school theme. So there was a fellow called the Dubner Magid, and he was known as a great and learned and famous teacher. And he was uh, in great demand at all the area communities uh, around Ukraine and everywhere. And um, he would be called for and he would travel around and here and there and go from community to community. He'd answer questions, he'd give speeches. Everybody was always very excited to see him. Whenever he showed up at the community, they would give him a big feast. And after a while, you know, he started to get a pretty decent living from it. And so he was able to hire uh, a peasant called Ivan who would drive him around in a nice carriage. And so everywhere he went, everyone would go, oh, there's the Duke of ah. And you know, he, he'd show up in style, the carriage and everything. And, and this was a pretty good arrangement. Um, and so this went on for some months. And after a while, at one point, they were, uh, they were going to uh, uh, some particular town somewhere. And they started kind of chatting with each other as they did in the long journeys. And uh, Ivan said, you know, Magid, I got to tell you, it's kind of a downer going to all these communities with you because whenever we show up anywhere everybody's really excited to see you but nobody is particularly excited to see me I mean you know I'm just Ivan you know I'm an illiterate peasant what do I know but still you know one of these days I would love it if we could switch places you know let me wear your nice clothes ride in the carriage and you know you could take the horse whip and go up front and you know we'll, we'll, we can see what happens and now it the Dubner Magid at first thought, well, you know, Ivan, I don't know if this is such a great idea. I mean, it's a big responsibility to be, well, me. <laughs> but they thought about it for a while, and, and you know, the Dubner Magid, you know, he'd been going from town to town to town and talking and talking and talking, and he was getting a little tired, and he thought, oh, okay, Ivan, I'll tell you what, the next place we go to, I think it's Tarnopol. I'm going to let you take my place. So they switched clothes. They switched places. Ivan went in the nice carriage. And the Dubner Magid, he went up front with the horse whip, and off they went. Well, so they arrived at Tarnopol, and everybody came out, oh, it's the Dubner Magid, oh, hello, 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 and they went for the carriage, and they opened the door, and, you know, they took out, well, Ivan, and they took Ivan out, and they gave him a great big dinner, and they gave him every single yummy, delicious thing that they could possibly cook. I'm sure there was challah, I'm sure there was brisket, I'm sure there was absolutely every form of pickled cabbage and borscht. It was fantastic. And the Dubner Magid, well, you know, he went to the stables and he patted down the horses, and, and you know, and then he, he went over and he walked into the area where they were feasting, and he kind of sat on a stool at the side, and somebody gave him some day-old bread. And he kind of sat and he watched, and, and he thought it was kind of interesting to see for once. Nobody was paying attention to him. Of course, people at Tarnopol, they didn't know what the Dubner Magid actually looked like. They knew that he drove around in the big carriage and all, but they didn't know what he looked like. So as far as they were concerned, Ivan was the man. So there he was up there, and you know he was eating and everything, and time went by, and the feast was going. And finally, by the end of the feast, a couple of aged rabbis with long gray beards came up to Ivan, sitting up there in the dais eating, and they said, <coughs> Great Magid, we have questions for you of Talmudic importance. <laughs> well, the Dubner Magid over in the corner started to chuckle a little to himself, going, <laughs> he wanted to see how Ivan was going to handle the situation. And Ivan, well, <clears throat> he sat back and <clears throat> belched a little bit. The borscht was really strong and tarnable. And he said, oh, bring it on, you know, tell me, what's your problem? And so they started to expound, you know, in Hebrew, all the different issues that they were concerned with, and the Talmud, and the Torah, and the this, and the that, and the this. And Ivan looked, and he listened, and he frowned, and he frowned more deeply. And by the end of this long colloquy, he looked really, really upset. Well, the poor little guys were sh just shaking and quaking in their boots, looking up at him because the Dubner Magid looked pretty mad. And he said, I don't believe this. I drive all this way to answer serious questions, and you ask me these ridiculous things? Why, these are so easy, these questions you're throwing at me? Look over there in the corner. You see that guy? That is Ivan. He's my driver. He's an illiterate peasant. And you know what? Even he could answer these questions. Ivan, will you come over here for a minute? Can, can you just come over here? 
The Dubner Magid smiled. He sauntered over there and quietly began to answer the questions that the rabbis had asked. And after a little bit of time went on, people began to scratch their chins and scratch their heads, and they began to look at Ivan and the Magid, and Ivan and the Magid. Oh, oh, oh. Well, the residents of Tarnopol learned a little lesson that day about not judging a book by its cover. But I'll tell you, from that day on, everywhere that the Dubner Magid went, he got a great meal. But so did Ivan. <laughs>